I made a Tower Survivors clone in Godot that is inspired by the original Warcraft 3 game. The goal for this project was to ultimately finish and sell my very first game, but give myself a limited amount of time. I'm trying to make a game like this. This is a Warcraft 3 game where a tower in the middle continuously shoots against incoming waves of enemies. You gain gold by killing them and then you can upgrade your tower in rounds. And if you want to reroll the upgrades, you have to spend gold. I'm gonna do it in this type of art style we're gonna call our game tower defense smart right because we have one tower and it's defending itself tower defense amazing name true true Following the GDC talk from Spiderweb Software from a very long time ago, I started by gathering sprites from the internet, notably from OpenGameArt.com and itch.io. His reasoning for this is because you can get 90% of your sprites from the internet and then maybe do some slight modifications in cases where the difference is very noticeable and then already have that part of your game very close to being finished so you can focus on actual gameplay and maybe coding. The only thing I needed to make sure of is that that I used the correct license, which in my case was CC0, which stands for you can just use it and do whatever you want with it. Wouldn't it be better to make your own art so the art styles don't clash? What we will do is get 90% of the sprites from the internet and then 10% is what we do ourselves. And we are following this guy's advice right here, a guy who has been making games for longer than games exist. This one here. Macworld put us on their shareware CD, which was enormously successful. I saw this talk like 30 minutes ago. You didn't see the talk yet really it's a very good one art wise i was looking for pixel art only and perspective wise i wanted to have a sort of top down view perspective think about stardew valley in a sense that is what i wanted to have in my tower survivors clone style wise i was heavily inspired by a game called death must die which is essentially just a survivors clone but I think the art style is really cool. It is this dark, ominous setting. And then you have skeletons approaching from all sides, you know. It gives this Diablo feel, which I really like. And then while I was doing that, someone in Discord actually used AI to create pixel art. Oh my god, bite you hell. Holy shit. Oh my god. Oh my god. But this is... I can't use this. Generated some pixel art stuff with stdl2 but maybe you can use those for some of your assets i could tweak them pretty good these were generated with one to two keywords wow yeah really good but am i allowed to use them you can also get some characters different angles but it takes some work holy shit this looks really good but i generated some too a while ago i didn't know if any of these could serve am i allowed to make a game and sell that because this looks really good i'm not allowed to use them not if you want to release on steam so then this is completely useless it looks really good but unfortunately we can't use that right you can i can use them and sell my game with this mit license i see i use i sell and this is when i asked myself the question well would it even be allowed for me to use AI on Steam? I know that Steam changed their stance on AI and they won't just ban every single project that has AI in it. I think right now you have to label it, but I'm still quite unsure whether it is allowed. So if any of you guys have more information on this, please let me know in the comments. Oh God, now we have all of these assets and according to our game plan, we have done this right now. We didn't look at all of these. There's still the unit asset store and craft pick but I think we've got a good foundation now and we should begin by placing a tower in the middle that is the first thing that I want to do tower base and after we have the tower we well, want to do the map so I started setting up my project in good old Godot engine and as always the very beginning aka the setup of your project is the most annoying part of Godot I don't know why they made it so annoying in my opinion it should just be the new project name and click create but anyways i hope they improve this in the future i think that's a huge barrier for anyone coming in my next course of action after that was done was to figure out the world size which is actually the size inside the game that you are operating in and death must die as i was inspired by that has a world size of 640 by 360. so now i have a question uh, does anyone of you own death must die what happens when you make the screen smaller what is displayed is the game smaller zoomed out or is the game cut off the image gets smaller so it just zooms in and the minimum size of the game i was memeing i have no idea
Will Asmon be in your game? Yeah, yeah, he will be the last boss. I will cut out his, cut out his face here and then I will just make him walk with his mouth, mouth open. It's like, oh. Pixel art games work in a world resolution. What does that mean? Well, often elements inside of that world resolution can only be drawn on the pixel grid. If you think about it, if you have two pixels and then they half align with each other, it looks bad. And the best example of this is Celeste, actually, because it is so zoomed in. You can very much see that Celeste never actually misaligns with the pixel grid. It is always pixel perfect positions. And then when you have this final image, which is, let's say, in 640 by 360, you then take that and scale it up to your window, which could be the size of your screen or maybe smaller. In the game, I wanted to make a tower first and spawn it in the middle and then work on the background. For that, I already downloaded a couple of tile sets and from those I started with a cave background which didn't work out very well. So I decided to literally do the same thing as in the Tower Survivors clone from Warcraft 3, which is a tower in the middle surrounded by a bunch of forests and then the enemies would spawn from within that forest. This is also where I learned something new about Godot, which is the point light. Unfortunately, the point light, even though it is really cool, it is bugged because the texture filtering is not actually applied to the texture. Mm, this must be a bug then, that it doesn't use the appropriate filtering for the texture. It might just be bugged. Okay, so I have nearest sampling enabled for most of the texture. So this is the default texture filter. But now I'm using a texture here in a point light and I would like this texture to be filtered linearly. Instead of using a texture, I also had the option to use a gradient, which is basically just like a texture and you can define the resolution yourself. So if you can't use linear filtering, you just use a very high resolution texture, aka gradient, and then it does look smooth. That worked. And after I was done with that, I started using or adding trees. And since I had to use different assets, some of them obviously looked out of place compared to others. So what I had to do here is take the trees that look different. First of all, I decided on one set of trees that I liked, and then I decided Decided those would be the baseline and then all of the other trees or other assets that I would use I would make them fit color wise into the trees that I liked so I converted a bunch of assets so that they would fit together I also added in my first enemy which again since I was using asset packs was very easy wow that looks really cool do you see this new sprites and you can make specific animations that is our first enemy. The only thing that's missing is the shadow on the bottom. To finish off the enemies, I added a script to make them walk to the tower. And then I also added in a spawner so that the enemies would spawn on different locations. Oh, there's it. Yeah, it's spawning, but they are not moving. Lol? <laughs> Whoops! Um, yeah? The bug happened, I think, because the enemies were walking too slow and then they would spawn inside of each other, which would push them out or like push them weirdly. Uh, this is one of the quirks that engines bring with them. It's like this perfect physics, I guess. They're very chunky. I don't like... Oh, wow. Look at the... What is this? Like, come on. You gotta stack on top a little bit. In order to fix that weird behavior, I had to change the collider from a, I don't know, sphere to a circle that would make them stack better and then i also you know just decided to make the window bigger because it was actually really small i decided that i would scale the world by two aka 640 by 360 would fit into i don't know twice the size okay i also added a collider to the tower so that the enemies would not walk right into it <laughs> The next day I worked on attack animations and for that I needed to have a different type of collider which would act as the oh I can attack now collider. Essentially the way this works is you have your own body, this body has a collider and then you have your attack circle or attack radius that is also a collider or area in which you look for things to attack. The important thing here is the layers. For example, since we have two colliders, we also have to define different layers. The bodies would all be on layer one, so they don't run into each other. And then the attack collider would be on layer two, so the same as the tower, so that when the enemy gets close to the tower, he knows that, oh, I can attack the tower now. If you're interested in that, I use the on body entered method, but I'm pretty sure you know how that works. I also improved my spawning system to make it more extensive. Oh, you can see them here. Lol. Yeah, so I can't spawn them on top of each other. I don't understand why they don't just push themselves out. That makes no sense to me. Shouldn't it just 
push themselves away from each other. Clear the layer so they don't collide. They are trying, bro. <laughs> so essentially how my spawning system worked was very simple. I had like five or six different spawn locations. And then on these spawn locations, I would want to spawn not only one enemies, but maybe two or three enemies, right? And so in order to do that, I had to define some sort of spread. Because if I spawn them right on top of each other, as you saw, they were jumping all over the place. Uh, so I defined a, I think it was five by five grid in which they would spawn one would be spawning on top to the left right bottom please tell me that works oh my god this works so well it works so fucking well good damn oh it works wow god damn first try boys no way oh damn <laughs> Since the enemies are now walking and attacking the tower, the obvious next step is that the tower fights back. And for that, I needed a some sort of attack area for which I used a circle. Now, the cool thing about this is that I can actually turn this circle into some sort of top-down view version circle. Oh my god! Damn! This is insane. I didn't know that you could do that. We can deform the circle to make it perfectly match the perspective. Since in this type of game, there is going to be a bunch of enemies attacking the tower and approaching it. I needed to get a list of all of the enemies that I can attack. And then I needed to sort them based on some sort of criteria. <laughs> Oh my god, this is great. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. We have a bunch of enemies spawning and we can extend this. Check monitors. Seems to run quite stable. A couple of hiccups here. This reminds me of they are billions. Yeah, that is the idea. It's kind of they are billions. Yeah, but hopefully we have cool upgrades. <laughs> Since the tower was attacking now, obviously it doesn't look really good if I don't have a projectile. And that is what I was doing now. I didn't find anything good on the internet, so I decided to create my own very first weapon, which was just a boulder. And then I would launch that boulder onto enemies. The boulder would be a physical weapon and would prioritize physical enemies. I will get into detail about how that works later. But essentially, we have physical and magical weapons and physical and magical enemies. And if there's a chance to attack a physical enemy with your physical weapon, then the weapon will prioritize that enemy based on the distance. Closer enemies would be attacked first. That was the idea. But shooting a boulder in a straight line is actually quite boring, so I decided to give it an arc. <laughs> oh, I just fucking love this shit, man. Oh... <laughs> Boing. Let's make a prediction. Nah, it's just gonna work, bro. There's no need for a prediction. What are you talking about? <laughs> Oh my! Wow! Guys, look at the bottom here. There are the rocks. <laughs> I want to add a particle system that does all of it on its own without me doing any coding. I want this to show that the rock is flying. Now that I had the perfect arc on the projectile, I also wanted to give it particles. Essentially like a trail that lags behind the projectile and makes it look really cool. However, in general, the UI and Godot to the right, I'm speaking mostly about the inspector, is not that great. I have to say, finding options in there is very difficult because it is in so many different submenus, drop down menus, click on material, create material, then click on the options there. It's not like in Unity. I was expecting Unity. You create a particle system and then you have a bunch of options in a neat list. It's not perfect, but I was expecting a little bit more. So yeah, that was a doozy, I have to say. Gotta say, this is my second attempt to get into Godot, but I can't follow the tutorials when the Godot change, changes drastically. Okay, go to process materials, go to textures, drag and drop, go to material, canvas menu, click uh, here, tick, particles animation is on. Okay, maybe particles animation is no, it's on. Uh, now go to process material, click on particles material, scroll down to animation, change speed from zero to one. And to iterate again, the setup was so difficult not because 
it is actually difficult to create a particle system like that. No, unfortunately, the setup was so difficult because the UI is so complicated. And I don't think it needs to be that complicated. I don't know why they decided to do it this way. There must be a reason. And if you want, tell me about it in the comments. My honest opinion is that it should be much easier if you want to invite a broad audience into your engine. I want this to spawn not more, but... Hey? Emit frequency. Every five seconds, please emit a particle. Where is that option? Emit frequency. Oops. Why is there nothing like that? I think it's very pock that you have finally realized making an engine is too hard for you. And now, and now you're going to use Godot. A very good choice. Uh, feels okay, man. Okay, champ. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> so funny. I can't open this. God, oh, please. I just want to add a fucking particle system to the fucking notes, man. Guys, I can't open this anymore. Why? Uh, of course, I talked about it in the previous two videos and I'm gonna keep talking about it. This stupid scene error always happens to me. But this time I'm finally able to track down the issue. You have to take the script reference in the scene file, delete it, then you will be able to open up the scene and attach the script. Again, I don't know what I'm doing wrong that this happens to me all the time, but in my opinion, even if I don't have the latest version 4 point, point whatever, listen, this version 4, this should not happen on nobody's computer. This is a, I call it, game-breaking bug and people will leave the engine if they keep getting this. So in my opinion, this should be the top priority. Fix that, please. Now that I had a nice looking boulder, I thought it would be cool if I add some sort of AOE impact. A boulder is a heavy weapon in my opinion and when it impacts it should deal AOE damage. For that I had to create another collider that is a circle collider and then whenever the projectile would hit an enemy it would take a look at all of the overlapping bodies with this AOE area and then deal damage to those. <gasps> oh my god! It worked. And this was my very first weapon. I couldn't upgrade it yet, but I was able to attack enemies that are approaching the tower. And this is basically the bare bones of the project. Nothing more is gonna happen, just with different weapons. So I decided to create such a weapon. And I decided to make it a fireball. A copy from the boulder, of course, but with a fireball visual. And this one would deal magic damage. However, after copying the projectile, I learned that the particle system had a material and that material would have some options that are now again i don't know how the internals of the engine work but they are now shared between the two scenes meaning if i change one material the changes would propagate to the other material because it's the same material and what i mean by that is if i change the particle system of the boulder then it would affect the particle system of the fireball which is not what i wanted so i had to make it unique make sure to make the particle process material unique not sure if those are unique or carried over. I need a break. Oh my god! Alright, let's see what it looks like in game. We should now have two different weapons. Oh wow, they attack both at the same time. That's bad. This is where I want to go more into how the game works. We have magic and physical attacks. The boulder would be physical, the fireball is magic. And now I have magic and physical enemies approaching the tower. Based on the distance from the enemy to the tower, I would create a list. And that list would have sorted by distance magic and physical enemies. And now from that list, I would take only, if I have a magic weapon, I would take only the magic enemies into account. If there are no magic enemies, then I will take the very first physical enemy. And the same holds true for physical weapons. So essentially, closest and type priority, if that makes sense. In order to test that, I had to make a new enemy and I decided to create a hound. Yeah, it looks a little bit odd when they walk <laughs> at the bottom there. Yeah, And they are being blocked. <laughs> <laughs> 
Nothing special here, they just looked really weird, so I had to change the spawn location so they don't walk into each other. This was also the time when I started learning about what is called a pivot point. Essentially, every single sprite in the game is drawn using some sort of layer or sorting algorithm. So essentially, if I have a tree and that tree is further down, that tree should be drawn on top of a tree that is further up on the y-axis. But the pivot point is essentially the determination of where in the sprite you take that sample on the y-axis. If you move the pivot point down, then it is more likely that the tree would be on top of another tree that is right next to it which has its pivot point in the center, if that makes sense. So I essentially changed all of the pivot points. The result of that change is that you have a better perspective. You can have enemies walking from behind the trees and appear from behind the trees or grass. Makes it look real, <laughs> in a sense. <laughs> I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> oh my God. This looks better. I don't like this at all, by the way, that they are being blocked by this one ghost. I don't like that they don't spread very well. Like, they don't seem to find a proper path. They just stack on top of each other. Now that I had two enemies in the game approaching the tower, it was time to give them HP bars. This makes no sense. This is full color. This is not white. This is full color. I used to, like, <laughs> why doesn't it work like this? Full color, choose a color, paste the fucking color. Why in Godot is this fucking thing full and full should give me not white? Huh? It's a little bug on top of this right color. Oh, I see. Okay, well, guys, we found another bug. That is four bugs today. <laughs> I want this to be green, actually. And then the background, I want this to be black. That's that's not difficult to do. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much. Sorry, I'm so impatient. I just find this sometimes. It's a little bit... Um... What the f... Uh, and then we have the value, right? <laughs> is it just lagging? Or is it just... Is, lag is it lagging? No, it's not. It's not lagging. It's going in jumps. Uh, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately that didn't work. So I decided to use a texture progress bar because that gave me smooth interpolation. Maybe there's an option for the other progress bar to make it not increment in steps. But listen, that should be default. Oh, wow. Look at that, boys. Our HP bars. Look at this. We're going to shoot now. Watch. Boom. Oh my god! Uh, this is so fucking cool! Bruh! Yeah, you see how the grass is covering this and here too and here too. Yeah, something is wrong. It looks like there's another bug with the pivot point. Well, it's so many bugs in this engine, man. Holy shit, bro. <laughs> Okay, so last time we tried to use an HP bar on enemies, but the problem was that we couldn't give it an ordering, I guess. So, for example, if we have enemies spawning here or here, the HP bar would be behind the tree or behind the plant, which obviously is completely wrong and looks weird and breaks immersion. So, last time we tried to make it work and then we realized that this doesn't work at all because, well, it's bugged. We have the HP bar right here, if we take a look at it and then see further down, this is the anchor point or pivot point. I don't know what you want to call this. This is where the layer gets calculated. So, for example, if we take a look at the animated sprite for the character or the enemy, we can see that the anchor point is down below here. And so everything origin, yeah, something like that. The layer is relative to this point. So whenever something is below this point, it's being drawn uh, before the unit and if something is behind the point or above the point then the unit is in front the same should potentially hold true for the hp bar because it's just a sprite we set the anchor point to the exact location as the character so that we can draw the hp bar in the same location as the character unfortunately however this does not work so last time someone told me that it might just be better if we make our own hp bar 
And it's actually very simple to do, I think. Yeah, it was simple. I just created two sprites. One sprite was behind the other sprite. The sprite in the back was black. The sprite in front was white. And I could just do whatever I want to do with it. Perfect. That resulted in Skyrim-like HP bars. But whatever, you know, works. Huh. You see how the, the second bar works? You see how this is on top? Oh my god! Oh. Oof. Oh, yeah. The next day was a big day because it was the UI day. I had a bunch of weapons already. I had a bunch of enemies. Now it was time to implement a UI so that I can upgrade and reroll my weapons. In order to create a UI, I learned about what a texture atlas is. You can just create control nodes, which was really cool. And then you can define your own texture rects that index into the atlas. You choose a region and then you have your sprite. However, it was a little bit tedious to define all of those texture rects, so I decided to quickly boot up a sprite and create my own UI element that consisted of a bunch of slots, all the weapon upgrades and the passive tower upgrades that I didn't have yet. Once I was done, it was time to load it into the game. The very first iteration was a little bit too small, so I decided to scale it up by two. That in turn resulted in a menu that was way too big, and unfortunately the problem here was that it would hide enemies approaching from the bottom right. So I then decided to test out if I could not put the UI elements to the right, but ultimately I decided against it because the mouse movements for the player, if you're playing on a computer, it is just much easier to move horizontally than it is vertically with your mouse. So finally, the latest version was two rows in the bottom right corner to not hide too much from the game and then a somewhat non-functional HP bar for the tower. Awesome. So now those two are rotated properly and we have the first two weapons displaying on the bar and we can click on one of those weapons, upgrade it and then when it refreshes we can upgrade it again until obviously there are no more upgrades. You can see that the fireball is doing 140 damage to the ghosts and the stone is doing 60 damage. Obviously there's too many ghosts spawning right now but this is what it will look like. Essentially how the game works is the following. You have a bunch of weapons on the tower and periodically you can reroll those weapon upgrades that you have on your bar. And those weapon upgrades obviously make your weapons stronger and you can invest gold into those weapons. And as you make your weapons stronger you drop more gold because you kill more monsters and you can then use that gold to obviously get more weapon upgrades and make your tower stronger. If you have a terrible roll of weapon upgrades, you can re-roll the weapon upgrades yourself using gold. Now that I had a list of weapon upgrades showing up in the bar, it was time to work on the skill descriptions. And for that, it was my very first time of using a canvas control node. Essentially what you can do is you create this control node and then you add in other control nodes into this control node that would magically, I guess, fill in text and make the window fit the text or make no wait actually it is make the text fit the window no no the window fits the text i decided on a fixed width window with text that would grow up and the coolest thing about this is that the content of let's say text notes in there is not limited to just text obviously you can make different colors and you can choose different layouts but you can even put in images which was very helpful because i needed a coin i needed the boulder icon or the weapon icon and then i also wanted to have different colors for the weapon name and very important features of the weapon like damage and cooldown i have to say playing around with this was really fun there we go that's what i want it looks really good oh yeah and by the way did i mention that this took <laughs> four days to do <laughs> We need to make it so that we can only upgrade if we have enough gold. And if, the go if we don't have enough gold, then we want to display this as red. And we also want to put a UI element here somewhere to update our gold count. This day was a short day. I literally just spent the entire day on working on my gold counter. Very productive day. <laughs> I mentioned earlier that I needed a reroll button in the game so that whenever I had terrible upgrades for my weapons, I could use that reroll button to reroll by hand and using a gold cost, of course. So I spent some time creating this button and then added that into the game. Ah, uh, so much better. You see this? 
how it upgrades now. Yeah, and every time I press that button, obviously the gold cost of rerolling would increase, making it much more difficult to reroll weapons. And maybe sometimes you have to think about if you want to upgrade your weapons or not. Now, lastly, since the weapon upgrades reroll every couple of seconds, if I didn't mention that, that is actually how the game works. For that, I needed a some sort of progress bar, which was, <laughs> yeah, let's say not that simple to set up, I guess. Now, I don't need to do one minus anymore. Ooh. I'm hot now. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Relax. Oh, how it works! God. Oh, fuck. What is happening? Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. Um. Oops. I know what the problem... No, no, no. I know the issue now. I made a simple programming error, but that's fine. I like it. It's not perfect, but it's a beginning. Okay, so today I want to do this ability right here. We need a projectile, which we already have, thankfully. And then we need an impact effect, a double Im effect. Thankfully, I already had the missile from the texture packs that I downloaded. I just needed an impact effect. And so I booted up a playthrough of Asmongold playing Death Must Die. And this is where I want to show you a cool little trick. You can use shift and dot and shift and comma on your keyboard to go frame by frame in YouTube videos. So if you see a game that you like, uh, let's say a pixel art game, and you want to know how they do certain effects or how they are animated, YouTube is actually one of the best tools to debug those effects visually. Maybe you don't know how they are drawn using the graphics card and the rendering. However, you can see how stuff is drawn frame by frame and that works very well with pixel art that's what i did there so i was able to draw one myself and i think it turned out quite well holy shit look at this man boom 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 however unfortunately this was the last thing i did in godot I quit after that. And unfortunately, the reason for that is because the UI of Godot just broke me. I tried many more times during the entire process of the game, which I think was 14 days. I had numerous issues with the engine breaking or bugs in the engine, like, you know, the scene error or the point-like bug. Then with the HP bar not drawing properly. I know it's a canvas node, but uh, all of these things just gave me a lot of stress and unfulfillment i guess oh this sucks man fuck i can't make this glow this glow is based on a transparency value the less bright it is the less it glows so as i go down in transparency it is also less glowy and i have a feeling that this alpha value here is lying to me let's look at the animation you see how it's almost disappearing here? Yet here it's exactly the same value for the last three frames. It's lying to me. This is literally lying. I was just not having fun, unfortunately. How is this growing down? A am I tripping balls or something? Wait, it has movement, baby. And I came to the conclusion that, in my opinion, the engine is just not production ready yet. This seems to be in line with what Pontypants, the developer of a difficult game about climbing, says as well. Many things in Godot just need to be fleshed out more to be competitive to Unity or Unreal Engine. Yeah, this is the big problem about Godot. I think these menus are the worst menus of all time. Just why is it not like in Unity, where you have your particle effect on the top, right? The fucking texture, and then below that is all the options that you need velocity over time scale over time size over time direction over time speed over time why is this in every single fucking drop down menu somewhere in the fucking thing man i literally took a break for five days and i come back and i get angry immediately again because of this shitty ui design i can't fucking believe it man I just don't believe how fucking shitty this is designed. So why is it scaling down now? Why is it scaling down? Scale. Let's just search for scale. It's not scale. Why are you scaling? I didn't tell you to scale. Scale. What is this curve? 
What is this curve? Oh my god, yes. Oh, oh my god, it was a curve. I can't believe it. It was a fucking curve. Weird that didn't come up when you searched for scale. Yeah, because it would be too easy. Curve of life. <laughs> it is called scale curve. Yeah, that didn't come up when I searched for scale. That's true. Look at that. I'm searching for scale. But it's not. It's another bug. There's literally an entire section called scale. And it doesn't come up when I search the properties. So not only do they have a shitty UI, they also have a shitty searching system. Oh, Action 81 just subscribed. Oh man, thank you. Tick support for seven years. Nested drop down menus are so great. We have decided for the search functionality to omit results from them. It just takes a little bit of time to learn where you can find what you are looking for. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Oh no. Okay, plasma blasts can't be used for whatever reason. This type of stuff makes me want to quit this game, rewrite it entirely in C++, and be over with this shit. Because I have this scene error again and I'm... Aside from the bugs, I think the most annoying thing in the game, unfortunately, and I keep saying game because I'm just I'm a gamer, unfortunately, is the UI. Fix the stupid UI. In my opinion. Like, you can disagree, that's fine. But every single time I work with Godot, I'm lost in all of the submenus. And if you think it's fine that you have to click yourself through five, six, seven different submenus to find your option, then more power to you. For me, this was way too tedious. And I just couldn't deal with it anymore. So yeah, unfortunately the project ended here. But I'm thinking about rebuilding it in C++. Or maybe in Odin. We'll see. Or maybe even in J. I'll have to see about that. Maybe you guys can tell me in the comments what you think about that. Because I think the idea of the game is actually really fun. We'll have to see. I still have to make my own game of course. Um, but yeah, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did... Leave a like and subscribe for more. You support me ginormously with that. If that is even a word. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next one. Have a good one. Peace.